So there is uh, this question uh, that we had said we shall look at. That is the question number two in our hard doubts. Question number two, uh, which says that suppose you are the owner of a cake shop, the cake box. At the beginning of each day, you have to decide how many fresh cake, cream cakes to stock in order to meet demand during the day. Each cake costs sharing 70 and sells for shillings 130 each. The cake cannot be stored overnight and if any remain at the end of the day, they are sold off for sharing 30 each. An analysis of past sales data given uh, given the following information. Okay, so you are required, the decision you have to make is how many cakes should be bought at the beginning of each day. So, uh, when you're making a decision, making a decision, we always begin or we always take some steps we always take some steps, and the first step is the odd objective, is to identify the objective. So, so you just write as a writing. So the first step is to identify the objective. And the objective is what it is that you want to achieve. Now, if you are the owner of this cake shop, what do you think would be your objective? Sell. To sell the cakes, then after you sell, you meet the demand. After meeting the demand, what is the end goal of anyone doing business? Good is to make profits. So the objective is to maximize profits. The objective is to maximize profits. And if the objective is to maximize profit, then we say you need to know the general formula of profit. And we know very well that profit is given as revenue, you minus costs. And when we are in the world of decision making, the word profit is represented by the word fear. The word profit is represented by the word fear. Now, after you have known your objective, what is it that you are pursuing? The next thing is to know what we call options. Now, options have to do with the alternative courses of action. And I told you that options are within control. So this person is in a position to control the cakes to produce. Uh, or to, pro uh, to control production. Now, production is what in economics we call what? Supply. You are free, Ukiamuka, to decide that I'm going to bake this number of cakes or this is not what I'm going to do. I, after you have taken your options, the next thing is to know your outcomes is to know your outcomes. The next thing is to come up with the outcomes. So the outcomes are what is beyond control. Now, what is beyond control says you cannot be able to determine how many you sell, as in what in economics we call demand. How many customers will have? You see, like in this class, the number of chairs you can see here is the measure of our supply. That is within our control. But the number of actual students is our demand. Now, this is beyond our control. And after that, the next thing that you need to do is to know the type of decision that you are dealing with. The type of decision that you are dealing with. Now, if you have one year and one year, those decisions are called seagull. So this is called seagull stage. This is called seagull stage decision. Seagull stage decision. 
And uh, after you have uh, determined the single stage decision, the next step now is to come up with the uh, specific formula. And I want to wrap. Now, these things that we have written up that point, when you are dealing with a question in an exam, it is not a must you, uh, you show them, but they must be in your head because they are the ones that will be used in uh, doing now what we want to do. So the next step now is computation of theorems. Computation of theorems. Now, the computation of theorems, we use what we call the specific formula. And this is how it is going to be designed. Yeah. We normally have the option here, that is the production. We have the option here. Then we have uh, the outcome, that is the demand. Then we know that we are looking for profit. And profit is obtained as a profit is obtained as revenue minus cost. And we know that profit, or rather, and we know that revenue is unit sold, multiplied by the selling price. So we are going to talk of uh, unit sold here. Unit sold, we can call them A, unit sold. Brenda, welcome. We are dealing with question number two of our handout. Uh, this one you have to adjust for the unit so that you can see there are two of them there are two cases so we are told here that the cake cannot be stored. So we have a unit sold. The one. So the one we call them A. And the two, the two, we call them B, the unit sold. Uh -huh. Then from there, we will have a uh, revenue I think I needed to adjust here. This one I can call it uh, A. This one I call it B. This one I call it C. So revenue. Revenue there. And this formula for revenue will be will be adjusted like this. Any cake that is sold the same day, we are selling it at 130. So it's going to be 130 B plus any cake that is sold the following day, 
we are selling it at 30. So that is C, and the answer we will call it B. Then production costs, production costs. Now in the unit we produce, it is costing us 70. So it's going to be 70 A, and we call it E. And then we will have the what? The profit or the bills. Now this will be D minus E. So, yeah, okay. So, this is how now you go about it. Assume that we have uh, produced five kings. We have produced five kings. And demand is five. So, we shall go one by one. Demand is five. So, how many units do you sell the same day? You can see the five cakes. The four, not five. The number of cakes we married per day. Frequency of your five. Eh? So, cakes we one, two, three, four. Okay. So, assume that you have produced one cake and demand is one. So, how many do you sell the same day? The bigger man does more. As we will. Na kumekuja teja moja. How many do you sell? One. Is there anything that remains to be sold the second day? No. So, one times one thirty is what? One thirty. And the cost is what? 70. Cost is 70. So that gives us the profit of what? That gives us the profit of 60. I assume again you have produced one cake. But demand is two. So how many cakes do you sell? One. Any that remains? No. And therefore, your revenue is one thirty. Your revenue is one thirty. And your cost is still what? Seventy. So your profit is sixty. Assume again you have produced one and demand is what? Three. So you sell one, there is nothing that remains for the second day, and therefore your revenue is 130. And production cost is uh, 70, and you still have uh, what? 60. Assume you have produced one and demand now is what? Is four. Now you sell one, there is nothing that remains. The revenue is still 130. Uh, cost is 70, so your profit is what? 60. That is now what happens in the first option where you have decided to produce one. Now, the second case, I feel that now, Umeamua, you are producing what? Two, but demand turns to be one. 
So how many do you say that same day? One. The second day you sell one. Now the revenue will be one thirty plus uh, thirty. That will give us what? One sixty. Then the cost is one hundred and forty. So that gives us a profit of twenty. I assume again we have produced our two. This one is the last one we duplicate. You have produced your two, and demand is two. So you now sell the same day two. If there is nothing that remains to be sold the following day, uh, so your revenue is one sixteen, not one sixteen. Your revenue is two times one thirty. That is two sixty. The cost is one forty. So that means you're making a profit of 120. Now assume that demand is three. If demand is three, uh, the unit sold during the same day, they are just two because that is what you have. Nothing remains. So your revenue is 260. The production cost is 140. So you are talking of a profit of 120. I am. If uh, you get a demand of four, the sales are still two. Uh, there is nothing that remains for the second day. The revenue here is uh, 260. The production is 140 and we have 120. That is what happens uh, when you have produced just uh, two. Let's see what happens when you decide to produce three. When you decide to produce three, and demand turns to be one, and demand turns to be one, then you are going to sell one in the first day, and how many in the second day? Three or two. Two in the second day. So, that will be 130 plus 16, that is 100 what? 90, eh? 190. But your production cost is 3 times uh, 70, that is 210. So that gives you a profit of minus 30. It's a loss. 20. Oh, 20. 20. The loss. Ah, yeah. Then we assume that demand has come to two. If demand is two, the same day you sell two. Uh, the following day you are left to sell one. What have you back? And then uh, the revenue is uh, 200 what? This is 260 plus 30, 290. 290 and the cost is 210. So that gives us a profit of what? 80. Now assume that you have a demand of three. So the same day you sell three. And uh, the second day you sell zero. There is nothing for the second day. Uh, the revenue will be three times 130, that is 39. Zero. Ah, yeah. The production cost will be uh, 210. And therefore, your profit is uh, 180. Now, assume that you have sold four. Demand is four. So, if demand is four, you will sell three in the first day and nothing in the second day. Uh, and therefore, your revenue is 390, your cost is 210, and the profit is 180. That's okay. Now, assume that you have sold four. Assume that you have sold, or rather, you have produced four. Assume that uh, your production is four. 
So if your production is four, if your production is four, and demand turns to be one, <clears throat> you sell one in the first day and three in the second day. So as I will you go, the revenue will be 130 plus 90. That is 220. That's it. Yeah. Yeah. Higher. The production cost will be 4 times 70. That is 280. So 280, when you subtract it from uh, 220, you record a bronze of what? 60. Higher. If demand is 2, demand is 2. Um, the unit sold the same day, they are two. And the following day, you sell two. So two times 130, that is 260. Plus 60, that is uh, 320. Uh, so the cost still remains 280. So when you subtract, this gives you what? A profit of? Profit of what is it? Yeah. Ah, when you go to number three, uh, you sell three in the first day and you sell one in the second day. So three, that is 390. Uh, that must be 420. Aha, uh -huh. you less to eight. That gives you one forty, one hundred and forty as the profit. Then you have four here. You sell four, so there is nothing that remains. So four times uh, one thirty is five twenty. Five twenty. Now the production cost is still to eighty, so that gives us two hundred forty. That gives us two hundred forty. So that is the one thing that is required uh, for you to get uh, those answers. Most of your questions will uh, give you these figures that are already computed, but uh, in case they would want you to compute then that is how we go about the computation. Now from there, from there, the next thing is to prepare the summary. You prepare the summary. The next thing is to prepare the summary. Now, in this summary, in this summary, when you are in single stage decision, when you are in single stage decision, the summary is called payoff team. It's called payoff team. And this payoff table has this design. So here we normally show the options. 
So we have option one, two, three, four. And then down here, we have probability. We have probability. Have we have the probability so here we have the outcome one two three four and then here we have expected monetary value then we record those values that we have gotten there I think we had 60, 60. <laughs> Ah, uh, he was happy for number two. Was it 20 or minus 20? 20. Was 20. So there is a drop of 40. So this is minus 20 and minus 60. Then this is 80. This is 40. This is 140. Okay, then for the probabilities, probabilities you get them from the frequency. You can see where we are given the frequencies. Uh, they are saying the frequencies are 5, 10, 15, and 20. If you add them, you get what? <clears throat> you get 50. And you remember the formula of probability. Probability, we say it is the desired over the possible. The desired over the possible. So the first one will be 5. Uh, out of 50. So 5 out of 50 will give us 0 0.1. 1. So that 0 0.1 will now equal up 0 0.1. The next one is 10 out of 50 will give us uh, 0 0.2. So that 0 0.2 is recorded here. The next one is the what? Uh, 15. So 15 out of 50 is equal to what? 0 0.3. You record it here. <clears throat> and the last one is uh, 20. So 20 out of 50. Uh, 0 0.4. So that is how you get those probabilities. So most of the questions in your exam, they will give you that uh, data up to that point.
When you have that data, it is now time to make the decision. It is time to make the decision. And uh, now you write decision made using decision made using decision made using there are so many rules eh? so number one one is called most likely event tool most likely event rule most likely event rule <clears throat> so in the most likely event rule what we do is this you come here and check which one has the highest probability which one of your outcomes has the highest probability so this three which one has the highest probability huh? 0 0.4, good, 0 0.4. Now, if it is 0 0.4, it is coming from the outcome number four. So do we have uh, outcome four? Yeah. So here, the advice is uh, that simple. The advice is produce four kids. You produce four kids. That is the advice that we are going to give. Produce four kids. So it's as simple as that. You simply check the highest what? Probability. And it is used where the outcomes here have the same name, uh, have the names similar to those of the options. The names must be similar. You can see these ones. So if they were not similar, you cannot use that rule. Aya. The next rule, the next rule that we have, number two is called expected monetary value. <clears throat> monetary value rule. <clears throat> So in the expected monetary value rule, in the expected monetary value rule, we work it like this. We have the option here. Then we compute the expected <clears throat> monetary value, monetary value, without information, monetary value without information, expected monetary value without information, expected monetary value without information. So this is what you do. When you come to option one, when you come to option one, <clears throat> you take these payoffs that are here, and then you go multiply them by the probabilities. So we are going to have a 60 multiplied by 0 0.1 plus 60 multiplied by 0 0.2, plus 60 multiplied by 0 0.3, plus 60 multiplied by 0 0.4. So that is what we do.
Uh, so what is the answer? <clears throat> you get 60. Now that 60, when I can be up for EMB, you record 60. Record 60 there. And let us go to option two. Again, you take the payoff that I is uh line. So it is 20. Multiplied by 0 0.1 plus 120 multiplied by 0 0.2 plus 120 multiplied by 0 0.3 plus 120 multiplied by 0 0.4. One hundred and ten. <clears throat> uh, then we go to number three. Number three is minus twenty multiplied by zero point one. As a there multiplied by zero point two. As one a there multiplied by zero point three. As one a there multiplied by zero point four. On a year one twenty to one ten to make it up on the EMV, the expected monetary value. So I One hundred and forty. So that one forty to Navekapa. Then we go to number four, which is uh, negative sixty multiplied by point one plus forty multiplied by zero point two plus one forty multiplied by zero point three. Plus two forty multiplied by zero point four by zero point four. One hundred and forty again. One hundred and forty. So even is 140. Now what you do, you select the highest. So the highest of this is what? 140, and there are two of them. Eh? So the advice that you offer if you are using this rule is that they can produce, they can produce three or four units or cakes. They can produce three or four cakes. Yeah. Uh, that is rule number two. Let's proceed to other rules. So the next rule. is called uh, rule number three is called max max rule max max rule now in the max max rule 
what you do is also very simple like this. You come here and pick the option, and then you pick the maximum payoff. The maximum payoff. So we have option one, we have option two, three, and four. When you look at this table here, when you run through option one, the highest payoff is what? 60. Again, when you look at your table, in option two, when you run through, the highest is 120. When you go to option three, the highest is 180. When you go to option four, the highest is 240. So this rule, select the maximum of the maximums. Select the maximum of the maximums. So the maximum of the maximums here is which one? 240. So you circle that, and therefore you give your advice that they should produce four cakes. 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 By rule number four. Is called max mean. Max mean rule. It's called max mean rule. Now, max mean rule is equally simple because you get the option here and then you pick the minimum payoff. The minimum payoff. The minimum payoff. So in option one, you give a half of your table. When you look at your table, the minimum payoff is uh, what? Is 60. Sit down. The minimum payoff is 60. When you go to your uh, second option, the minimum is 20. The minimum is 20. When you go to your option three, the minimum is minus 20. When you go to option four, the minimum is minus 60. Minus 60. So this rule, it is interpreted like this. Select the maximum of the minimums. The maximum of the minimums. So the maximum of those minimums is The maximum of the minimum is 60. So you therefore advise these guys that they should produce how many cakes? One cake. They should produce one cake. Now, if you look at uh, these two rules, they are coming about as a result of combining two. Uh, which one and which one? Maximum and minimum. Eh? You can have two other combinations, although those ones we shall not write. You could have a uh, mean what? Min max. Eh? Min max. Now, if you are told to do min max, it means you will select the minimum of the maximums. So you will have the maximums here. Then you go for the minimum. The minimum will be this. Uh, the other combination that you can have is mean mean. If you are told to use mean mean, uh, you will select the minimum of the minimums. So the minimum of the minimums here is this. Yes. So with that, we proceed to the next rule number five. Yeah. 
So here, rule number five, we call it uh, Rapri's rule. Rapri's rule. Rapri's rule. Rapri's rule. And this Rapri's rule, we normally have the option here. And then we compute something we call simple average P of. Simple average P of. Simple average P of. Not a table. So in option one, in option one, what you do, you come here quick these pairs. So you say 60 plus 60 plus 60 plus 60, you divide by four because there are four of them. The answer will be 60. Sit down. Yeah. Uh, you come to option number two, you pick the pairs 20 plus 120 plus 120 plus 120. You divide that by four. Because there are four of them. Ninety-five. Ah, yeah. Number three, you have minus twenty plus eighty plus one eighty plus one eighty. You divide by four. One zero five. Then number four is minus sixteen. Plus 40 plus 140 plus 240. You divide by 4. So according to this rule, again, we go for the highest. So the highest is one over. So the advice that you are going to offer is they should produce what? Three cakes. They should produce three cakes. They should produce three cakes. Okay. I uh, rule number six. Uh, rule number six. Rule number six is called how it's rule. And in how it's rule, we should be given something we call the measure of optimism, alpha. So here we are going to say that alpha to be 0 0.8. So when we say that eh, it was not provided, we have assumed. But in a question, they will always give you the alpha. If they want to use that too, they will always give. So we have the option here, and then we compute something we call weighted average P of. Weighted average P of. Weighted average P of. So in the weighted average P of, option one here, uh, what you do, you take this alpha, 0.8 multiplied by the best. 
the best is uh, 60. Plus one minus alpha, one minus alpha is 0 0.2. So 0 0.2 times the worst, the worst is 50. So the answer will still be what? 60. So when you check in the notes, you will see these formulas, they are there. When you come to number two, you take alpha 0 0.8, multiply by the best. The best payoff there for number two, when you look at that line for number two, you get the best is 120. And 0 0.2 times the worst. The worst there is uh, 20. The worst there is 20. Worst is 20. So... You get a hundred. Uh, then number three, number three, you get zero point eight times the best. The best is one eighty plus zero point two times uh, the worst. The worst there is minus twenty. One forty. Get one hundred forty. Ah, then number four, the best is zero point eight times rather the alpha is zero point eight times the best there is two forty. Zero point two times the one the worst there is minus sixty. One eight. So once again, according to this rule, you should go for the highest. You should go for the highest. So the highest is one hundred eighty, and that one eighty is coming from number four. So we are going to advise these guys that they need to produce four kicks. We need to produce four kicks. Yeah. Right. Ah, eh? yeah. All right. The next one, before now you do the others, before you do the others, you need to prepare, you need to prepare a table we call opportunity. Uh -huh. We prepare a, a table called opportunity losses. Some people call it regrets. Table. Regrets table. The opportunity losses or regrets table. And this table is usually like this. Become a two year at the Quanayo. Like these are the one. So here we have the option one, two, three, four. And then here we have the probability. Here we have the outcome. 
and then we get something called expected opportunity loss. So design up to that point. Uh, you're through, eh? So what we do, eh? You come to this idea. You go to the table there, the table that we had, that original table, this one. Then you'll be picking the highest in every column. Like now, the highest here will be 60. The highest here will be 120. The highest here will be 180. The highest here is 240. Then you subtract the others from it. You subtract the others from that. So, uh, like now, this one, I will say, if I come back here, if I come back here, because the highest is 60, I will talk of 60 minus 60 is equal to 0. Then 60 minus 20 equals 40. I have 60 minus minus 20 is equal to 80. 60 minus minus 60 is 120, and the probability is 0 0.1. We go to the next one. The next one, the highest is uh, 120. 
So you say 120 minus uh, 60, that is 60. Uh, 120 minus 120, that is zero. Uh, 120 minus uh, 80 is uh, 40. 120 minus 40 is what? 80. And the probability is 0 0.2. Okay. Then we go to the third one. The third one, the highest is 180. So it is 180 minus uh, 60. That is 120. 180 minus 120. That is 60. 180 minus 180, that is zero. 180 minus 140, that is uh, 40. And the probability is 0 0.3. And then when I get to the last one, the highest is 240. So I would say 240 minus 60, that gives us 180. 240 minus 120, that gives us 120. 240 minus uh, 180, that gives us what? 60. 240 minus 240, that gives us what? Zero, and the probability is 0 0.4. The probability is 0 0.4. So that is how you create that table. So with that now, we go to the next rule. The next rule, which is called number, it's number seven now. Rule number seven, which is called savage. Stroke regrets rule. Now in this savage or regret rule, what we do is you have the option here, and then you compute what we are calling expected opportunity loss. Expected opportunity loss, expected opportunity loss. And this one, you take option one. Take option one. Just like we did with EMV, you do the same here. So this payoff, I mean, uh, these regrets, we have zero times 0 0.1 plus 60 times 0 0.2 plus 120 times 0 0.3 plus 180 times 0 0.4. So One hundred and twenty. And we go to number two. You take forty times zero point one plus zero times zero point two plus sixty times zero point three plus one twenty times zero point four. Seventy. All right. Then number three, we have eight times zero point one plus forty times zero point two plus zero times zero point three plus sixty times zero point four. Thank you. 
40. Then we come to number four. We have uh, 120 multiplied by 0 0.1. Then plus 8 multiplied by 0 0.2. Plus 40 multiplied by 0 0.3. Plus 0 multiplied by 0 0.4. Forty again. So if it is forty, this one again we go for the rest because it's a loss, eh? It's a loss. So being a loss, you go for the rest. So the rest is uh, forty. So that means the advice that you are going to give. The advice is that they produce three or four cakes. The advice is that they should produce three or four. Yeah, because we go for the lowest. Uh, the next rule, number eight. Rule number eight. Uh, Rule number eight is called minimax regret. Rule. So in the minimax regret, you have the option here, and then you have the maximum regrets. Maximum regret. Regret is the rule, is the law. So, number one, the maximum regret in number one is one eighty. In number two, we have one twenty. In number three, we have 80. And in number four, we have 120. Those are the maximum regrets. So this rule, just like we said with the others, eh, in a song one, select the minimum of the maximum regrets. So the min minimum of the maximum is this one. So we are going to advise that they produce uh, three cakes. We are going to advise that they produce three cakes. Yeah, okay. So those are the eight rules. Now from there, there is something else that we need to compute. There is something else that we need to compute, which is called uh, value of information. We mentioned about it yesterday. <clears throat> value of information. Value of information. So in the value of information, what we do is this. You come here in this table. 
and you go picking the best. The best. So the best here in the outcome is 60. You multiply by 0 0.1. Plus, upper, the best is what? 20. Multiply by 0 0.2. The next one, 180. Multiply by 0 0.3. The next one is 240. Multiply by 0 0.4. So you pick the best. Then you subtract the best, the best uh, EMV, the best, the highest, which is 140. Which is 140. Yeah, so that is the value of information, the maximum amount that you should be willing to pay to these guys so that they can help you make the right decision. Okay. So that is all about the seagulls. Any question? Yes. So in an exam setting, you may ask you for a specific formula or you will talk about it. Or in an exam setting, they will ask you for a few of them. For a few of them. But now here, because you do not know which one they can ask, as in as to one result. But in an exam setting, they will ask you for just a few. That's a few. So those are online. Are you okay, Corinne and Brenda? Yeah. Okay, good. Brenda? Yes. Good. So let's look at uh, the next question number three, which is your assignment. But maybe I can help you design how it will look like. So the question says, eh? a bakery produces bread for sale to shops. Each loaf costs shillings 30 and is sold to the shops for shillings 40. The demand over a recent period of 50 days is given below. So we have demand per day. And if the bakery produces a loaf but cannot sell it to a shop, it loses uh, 20 per row. Required. Decide how many rows the bakery should produce per day. So, in answering that, eh, we will, uh, as I told you in an exam setup, we don't have to go through the steps or to write all the steps that I told you, but you can just come up with the computation of fails. Computation of pairs, computation of pairs. Now in the computation of pairs, you start with the option, and this option is the one we have called production or supply. Yeah. Let me use the word supply. Yeah. Supply. Then we have the outcome, which we have said is called what? Demand. Demand. And then we have 
in the other one, your column will be when we wake up for production. Units produce. Do you confuse you? Units produce. And I want to call them A. Units produced, so I call them A. Now they are saying that if the bucket produces a rope but cannot sell, it loses shillings 20. Uh, each row of costs. Uh, so, maneno. we have what we have produced. Eh? Uh, now, we have units sold. Let's call them B. Then, units not sold. Units not Sword. Let's call them C. Units not sold. Ah, uh, units not sold. Ah, uh, there is a handout I had sent. Breda is not in the past papers, so someone can reward Corinth. Or oh, even now, uh, Tracy, you can forward that hand out to the group. So the revenue made, revenue made, we are going to get it as a 40A, not 40A, 40B. And you call it B. Then we have production costs. Production costs. Every unit produced is costing us 30. So we will call it that A, and we call it E. Then for every We call it the overstocking costs. Overstocking. Overstocking costs. Because you have not sold them. That means you overstocked. That's why you could not sell. The, you are losing 20. So that is... Uh, 20 and then we have the profit so the profit or the bill so this will be d minus e minus x So
So I want to help you design. You can decide to produce 10. So let's start with 10 here. And when you produce 10, bar can be 10, 12, 14, 16, and what? 18. That is demand. So this one will be on their own. This is what I'm going to be up. You can decide I'm producing 12. The mark is 10, 12, 14, 16, and 18. You can decide I'm producing what? 14. The mark is 10, 12, 14, 16, 18. You can decide I'm producing 16. 10, 12, 14, 16. You can decide you're producing what? 19. 14, 16. You can decide you're producing what? 18. So you can agree the same way. Okay. So we are going the same way where you have decided you are producing 18. Demand can be 10. If you are they don't they don't I let us now look at the units that have been what have been produced. So the units that are produced, we actually need to different. In the other questions, when I call on course more by addition. So this one, it is 10, 10, 10, 10, 10. Here, 12, 12, 12, 12, 12. 14, 14, 14, 14, 14. 16, 16, 16, 16, 16. 18. 18, 18, 18, 18. That's fine. Let's now get the unit sold and uh, not sold. So we have produced 10, but there was a demand of 10. So we sell 10, and how many remain and sold? See, we have produced 10, again, it's a demand of 12, so we sell 10, nothing remains, and so, so the same case here, 10, nothing remains, 10, nothing remains, 10, and nothing remains, and so on. Here, we have produced 12, but demand is what? 10. So we sell 10, how many remain? Two. Demand when it comes to 12, we sell 12. How many remain? Zero. So here we sell 12, nothing remains. 12, nothing remains. 12, and nothing remains. Yeah. Yeah. 
Aya. Tukikuja hapa, we have produced 14 against the demand of 10. So we sell 10, tubakishe 4. Aya. Here, we sell 12, we are left with 2. Here, we sell 14, we are left with 0. We sell 14, we are left with 0. We sell 14, we are left with 0. Here, we have produced 15. So we sell 10, we are left with 6. We sell 12, we are left with 4. We sell 14, we are left with 2. We sell 16, we are left with 0. We sell 16, we are left with 0. Then here, I have produced 18. So I sell 10. I'm left with what? Eight. When I cross over to the other side, when I cross over, here I sell 12, I'm left with six. I sell 14, I'm left with four. I sell 16, I'm left with two. I sell 18, I'm left with zero. See, from there now you'll be able to compute. Ukisha compute, ukisha compute your figures. Ukisha compute your figures. You will now below there prepare a summary. So let's prepare the summary for your vacation to Kujaza. So we are now preparing a summary. We are preparing a summary. A summary I've told you is called the payoff table. The payoff table. So in this payoff table, here we are going to have uh, the option Option one, two, three, not one, two, three. It is 10, 12, 14, 16, 18, and then we have the probability. We have the probability. Probability. So this is one, two, three, four, five. So these are the outcomes. It is ten, twelve, fourteen, sixteen. 18 and EMV. EMV. Thank you. 
Done, eh? So, so from there, so you will make decisions as we have done the others. Eh? So you follow the same setup. You go all the way to value of information. Yeah. Then in your past papers, if you check, you'll be able to see a few questions here and there. So we call it at the other point. Uh, practice on that so that next time we just do one more on uh, the multiple stages.